Hey, my name is Joe Dubay, um, and I'm going to talk today about the experience era and how it's affecting commercial real estate. So what is the experience era? The main thing to take away is that the world is changing. It went from before being where um, it was something that you, know, you served any one industry, and maybe you sold a specific product and service. Today, we're all actually in the experience business. To think about commercial real estate today versus what's going to happen, um, it's a largely offline world. And that's, it's something that is focused on the space and less on the people and the experience of them. And that's something that's about to dramatically change. So what is causing the experience era? In one word, millennials. Um, today, millennials are the biggest cohort of any population. This is a really substantial shift. And this is something that is um, affecting the preferences of the workforce itself. And the reason why that's so is because millennials are different. They actually value experiences over products. And this is a critical thing to understand. Um, once this is grasped, it all starts to make sense. But the majority of millennials would rather spend money on an experience than a thing. Um, they're wired differently even when it comes to work. Uh, the majority of millennials would take less money if they were able to have a better experience at the office, if they felt the experience reflected themselves. Um, in contrast, in case you don't think that's different, only 9% of baby boomers would do the same. They are wired a bit differently, and we need to adjust to their preferences. So what makes something uh, fit the experience era? We've discovered there are six hallmarks to this new time. Specifically, you can see it involves enabling technology. Um, it's at least made more efficient through technology. Any one of the major experiences that consumers and enterprises are going through. In the experience area, users are empowered. They have voice. They're able to customize their experience. This is critical. It shows up in amenities. It shows up in services. Um, in the experience area, people care about community. And they're building community around these experiences that are previously about a service or a product. It's really the community that you wrap around it. Things have meaning. It's not just about the coffee, for instance. It's about why it's ethical. In the experience area, quality matters a lot, especially because these millennials are investing in the experience. Um, so it makes sense that they're, since they're shifting money to that, they would care more about the quality of it. And um, the last thing is design. In the experience area, you'll notice that if it starts to feel to you like more and more things look like the inside of an Apple store, it's because more and more things do look like the inside of an Apple store. Millennials care a lot about design, and it's showing up everywhere. So let's talk about a few industries and how they've been transformed already. In the US, there's the music scene. If you remember from 20 years ago, when you showed up to a concert, there were a few people playing music. And that's what a concert was. Now when you go to a music event, it's really much more about the experience. You walk in, and it's a crowd of people who are seeking like-minded folks. It's immersive. There are lights. There's artisanal food. Yes, someone's playing music somewhere, but that's not actually the primary thing you might take away from being at a music event these days. And this is popping up across the US. Now let's talk about retail. Um, when you used to go to a mattress store, it was a room full of a bunch of mattresses. Now you go in, and it's actually the ma minority might be a mattress. Um, what you're walking into is a place that's beautifully designed, full of narrative, um, really speaks to millennials. When you used to walk to a gym, it was a place full of heavy weights. Now, it's if you walk into something like Soul Cycle or Barry's Boot Camp, it's a group of people who are building community. They might feel even, uh, you might sense something almost religious around their dedication to this specific group, this room, and it's beautifully designed. If you think about consumer coffee, it's again something where you know it's the kind of uh, thing where people used to go and literally just get coffee from a diner. Now it's a beautifully designed room. Starbucks even calls itself your third place, recognizing that there is a, a different kind of feeling that comes in to a coffee shop today. Um, and now you can start to see it in, com in commercial real estate, just, the, just starting to. And that's something because in the past, it was really a place where you got work done. If you look at this market leader's historical office, now with Google, there's a climbing wall. They care about customization, choice, services. And they know that this is critical for them to actually hire the very best talent in what is an overheated talent war. The thing to keep in mind is that 99% of commercial real estate is offline. This is just starting to happen. Um, and over the next couple of years, you'll feel this in a really big way. This beginning of this experience matters because in the first couple of years, whenever there's a tectonic shift, those who adapt early, those are the ones who get to have outsized influence in kind of painting the future. Whereas if you fast forward around five years, the folks who haven't become the laggards. They're the ones who threaten the actual performance of whatever their underlying asset is. How will this change commercial real estate? What tactically do you need to do to enter the experience era? Well, specifically, 
Think about your building across a bunch of different dimensions. A big primary one is how do you think about lease terms? It's something where in the future people want to have duration of lease that reflects their actual needs, which is decreasingly two to ten years and much more, um, let's say, nimble. Outside of that, space controls. Today, it's something where people have almost no control, almost no voice. Um, that is changing rapidly through technology. You be able to you know, enter from, from accessing the building itself to requesting services. You can now actually have control over almost anything. Tenant feedback historically ignored with uh, a landlord or building manager really thinking of it the place as a, as a space as opposed to thinking of the people inside of it as customers. In the future, an experience first building um, it actually solicits feedback. It cares how its customers are doing. Outside of that, the brand of the building itself. This is something that's critical. In the past, people might not even know really what kind of building they're in, who the owner is, who's managing it. The future is a much more white-labeled experience where the building itself has a brand that people care about. Outside of that, something that's really critical is what do you provide in terms of services? In the past, nothing. Going forward, amenity rich. People should be able to get any kind of service they want, from food to um, any sort of wellness and like yoga. Whatever they might want, they need to be able to access through their building. And the final one, community. Um, you know, right now, buildings are a missed opportunity. Everyone inside of it could feel something. It could build loyalty. Instead, today, it's mostly a box that has no connectivity. The experience era has arrived, and there's no turning back at this point. Over the next couple of years, everything will change in commercial real estate. And it'll no longer be about the space, it's providing experience with space attached. Eden is ushering that in for all of the commercial key stakeholders, from the occupiers and the companies, to the landlords and the property managers. And we're enabling you to provide an experience first building for your tenants.